Hello and welcome to another Press Start Australia preview. Today we are talking Final Fantasy 16. Kieran, you're not long back from a trip to Japan where you got to spend, I believe it was a couple hours with the game, is that right? Uh, yep. Yeah, just over a couple hours. Excellent. And you've brought back a ton of footage of your time with the game for us all to check out. We've all been watching it and you'll see some of it on the screen now. Uh, the first thing that struck me watching this footage is the environment that you're in. It's a very dark medieval castle, which I guess isn't too surprising given we know that this is more the sort of high fantasy realm of Final Fantasy. Um, based on your experience with the game so far, what did you make of the game world, its setting and all of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess like one one thing to to the demo, as you said, it was is quite dark. Um, all the footage that you that you'll be seeing, it's not my footage, by the way. Uh, whoever's playing this is from you Square Enix. They're doing a much How better job. Day. <laughs> They're doing a much better job than I could have done at, at playing it. Um, but yeah, no, one of the things that uh, Yoshida-san or Naki Yoshida, who sort of is the producer on the game and introduced us to the demo before we started playing, he was like, I have to preface this with the fact that this is very dark and it's not indicative of the whole game, obviously. But this this one demo section we played, yeah, it was it was it was quite dim and, and dark and grim. But um, it's uh, I forgot what your question was. The game world. How did you? How did you find it? <laughs> did it like? It was, did it set up the kind of environment? Like, it looks like you're in pretty kind of a tight space here, so you might not have experienced much of the. Overall. Yeah, it definitely. Like, I think the purpose of this preview demo definitely was to showcase more the combat than anything else. Yeah. Um, because that is, I guess, like one of the big ways that they're departing from the previous games. So, it was a more linear section. Um, the game, the full game, as as far as we were told, will have lots of sort of more open areas for people to explore. It's kind of sectioned off in, into different areas that you can travel to from like a central hub. Um, so it was, yeah, it was definitely designed to sort of, I think it was roughly five hours into the game, they said, but yeah, it was definitely there to get us just kind of funneled along, getting into fights, seeing some boss battles, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, James, I know this is a game you're excited for as well, so do feel free to jump in. Are you, you you're not excited for Final Fantasy 16? No, I don't know. Give me a funny I, look. Like, I'll play it. You should I don't be. Know if I'm excited for it. Like, I'm not, like, screaming from the chandeliers about how Between much I want. Between and, and me, where would you place yourself on the scale of <laughs> yeah, excitement? Right. Squarely in the middle, I feel. <laughs> yeah. um, nah, um... I yeah the first the the most obvious thing that's like looking at this footage is the combat is I know that I think the somebody who worked on the combat on this worked on Devil May Cry um, and I can see that DNA here um, yep. I think the combat does look really snappy I, I think it's funny like coming off of um like Chained Echoes and Octopath that like this is where Final Fantasy is now like you'd never ever feel like mm. it's almost full-blown action game um, mm. m and I like how the what are the Simons called as icons Icons, yeah. Or Econs? Yeah, icons? <laughs> yeah, icons. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> yeah. James, you were yeah, literally like, asking You were questions. asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but his tone was like, I went to Japan. It's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> but, um, icons, I, James. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, the icons, I like how they, they in change the way that you do battle and stuff. It's not just do a summon, sit there for 45 minutes while it summons and does this cool attack. Yeah. And like no mm. damage. Like I, I mm. like that you can actually use them in attacks now. I think that's a really, really cool thing. And it is very DMC ish if I have to make a comparison. But like I think that's fantastic. It's a really cool. It, there's is so this many the cool wolf? summons. Is that is that what you're talking about? Well no. there's in the footage there's like Shiva, Ifrit and Titan, I think. Right. Are the three ones that I spotted when I was. Yeah. I think it's skimming. Garuda, not Shiva, but yeah. There's oh, there's the so three awesome. of those. Yeah. yeah. Final Fantasy Staples. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. No. The, oh no. Yes. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're right. Like, um, it's uh, it's. I think his name's Ryota Suzuki, um, who worked on Devil May Cry Five. So they poached him for this game specifically, uh, for to help them with their combat. Um, and we actually we got to do like a little roundtable interview with them, and he was saying, obviously, it's not quite as technical as something like DMC. Um, but uh they were kind of inspired by Final Fantasy V and the job system. So what they were doing with those icon Ooh. abilities, they call them pallets, is essentially you're, you're switching up what your kind of combat role is by changing what icon you're associated with at, at any moment. And you can, I don't know how many you can hold at a time, but we had three so that we could easily switch between them in the middle of the fight. 
Um, but that was really interesting. And then obviously you've got, um, I don't know how far into the footage you are, but you've got um, the big icon battles as well, which are like set piece moments where you actually transform into the icons. Um, and the one we played was Ifrit versus Garuda, and it was very much just like a one-on-one. -on -one. They kind of likened it to like a pro wrestling match. It was very like slow and deliberate, and you really had, had to think about your positioning and all that kind of stuff. But um, they said that all of the icon fights in the game are, use completely unique mechanics. Um, so there's going to be stuff that's more like an on-rail shooter. There's going to be stuff that's more like a platformer. Like they're, they're actually like really kind of mixing up how those fights work, which is very exciting, and I'm, I'm pretty keen to see more of those. Yeah, I, I, let's if we stick with the combat for a little bit longer, mm. I, did, I did want to ask you about that that wolf. How does yes. that work? How does that play into the combat? I kind of guess, looking at the layout of the UI on the screen, that the bottom left-hand corner are kind of some commands for it. Is that right? Yeah, so... Um on the on the d-pad you've got uh you've got your item use so you've got, you can kind of slot different items into your d-pad and you can unlike older final fantasies where you could have like hundreds of potions in your inventory or whatever you can only have like three or four of each type of potion right. um and so they're like limited consumables you have them in your d-pad um but then the other sort of menu you have attached to that is toggle who is the the wolf companion um and you can you can command him to heal you or like six certain enemies or whatever um but I'm glad you asked about him because one of the other interesting things you have, uh, they talked a lot about accessibility um, mm -hmm. and about how a lot of Final Fantasy fans are used to more slower paced combat, turn based, the hybrid systems and like FF7 yeah. remake and stuff. Um, so what they've got are these accessories uh, that you can equip no matter what difficulty, I think there's two difficulties that you can play on, no matter which one you're playing on, you can equip these accessories and they will automate some of the processes in combat. Um, so like on the extreme end, you've got one that basically just lets you mash square and, and do all the crazy like attacks and icon abilities and stuff without having to worry about actually pressing the right buttons. Um, one of them will like stop time when an enemy is about to hit you with an attack that you could evade or parry and let you do it. Um, and then another one automates toggle, so he'll just act on his own um, and kind of just help you out in battle without, having, without you having to worry about managing him. Um, That's very so there's cool. cool like... Yeah, there's cool, like, they, there's really easy ways to kind of sand down the edges of combat, um, but without really kind of losing any of it, you sort of still feel engaged and, like, you're you're part of it, but... Yeah, you're not having yeah. to, like, stick to kind of one attack. You, like, still get to sample the full range of stuff, albeit... Yeah, um, yeah, so I thought that was really cool. Way. Nice. I like it. What, what sort of um, abilities and attacks did you get to play around with? I imagine it was only a small sampling of what will be in the full game. Yeah. So with the yeah with the icon palettes we had available, um, one of the uh, two of them were kind of basic, just like big sweeping combos or like sort of wide area of attack stuff. Um, but then uh, one of them, Titan, was a little bit more complex. You could sort of charge optionally charge his attacks up, and he had like a um, like a special counter that was sort of risk versus reward. You'd really open yourself up to, if you were using it, but if you could, if you timed it right, you'd do a massive amount of damage. So. That's another thing that they were talking about in terms of accessibility is that some of the icon abilities are more complex for players who want that sort of higher skill level and then the others are more, mm. are more basic. Um, and you can mix them up on the fly. Um, you know, different elements obviously do better against different enemies, that kind of stuff all still plays into it as well. Yeah. Shannon, does the real-time combat, like, I'd, I'd, where are you at with Final Fantasy now? Have you kind of fallen out of it? Are you more interested in the newer titles? So it's weird, like I actually played pretty much every Final Fantasy game on like PS1, PS2, like with my cousin. Like I wasn't yeah. playing a lot of it, but I watched like all of them. It's honestly just the length is the main thing that puts me off. But definitely right. like this combat appeals to me more than than turn-based. Like I played a bit of uh, 7 Remake at like events and at home and like that combat really appealed to me. So yeah, I, I could see myself potentially trying this. I would like to see some more like open areas. Like, like I assume it's not all like dark and, and dungeons because that's not really what I think this series to be. But yeah, the, the combat looks really good and, and fluid and lots happening. So yeah, it, it looks good. Do you, do you get much of an idea for the story? Like in terms of, I feel like with 13, wait, where are we, 15? Um, <laughs> that like the cast had good chemistry and shit but like, i feel like the story overall was like pretty average like did you yeah. get a good feel for the story in this yet or is that like <sighs> was it more of a gameplay kind of preview 
a little a little bit like it, it was it was fairly self-contained but there were glimpses of it um and stuff that they didn't really want us to talk about um so but but it did it did definitely give me a sense it did give me a sense of where things were going and it's definitely a lot uh i don't want to say more mature because that feels like i'm saying it's i heard got someone say like fuck that never happens stuff yeah um <laughs> someone said fuck in the demo which was cool um, and then like the icon wow. fight, they were like tearing each other's arms and legs off and like regrowing them while they were fighting and stuff. It was very like, yeah, w way more visceral than I'm used to from the Final Fantasy game. So I'm right. expecting like more, more sort of dark sort of themes from the story. Um, and the writing is excellent. Uh, and the voice acting is excellent. And one thing that, um, one thing they were saying, cause we were talking to, we had the, the localization director Koji Fox in the room with us as well. And he was saying that his desk was basically next to the desk of the like the Japanese writing team because he's the English local localization director, and they would basically like write something and then he'd rewrite it in English and then they'd take that and rewrite it back in Japanese. So like, there's no like origin yeah. language in the game. Like it's all just like come from both teams, um, and I think that it, you can feel it in the game that it, it definitely doesn't have that weird kind of disconnect. It feels very natural. Interesting. I, I recognized one of the voice actors almost immediately in the footage. That, that gravelly voice. Was it Sid? Voice. Like the English gravel? Yeah. 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 Are they, who is that voice actor? They've got to be in Game of Thrones or something. I think so. I, everyone in the room was like, we know this guy. But nobody yeah. like <laughs> nobody could pick him. Um, cool. The enemies that you came up against. With, yes. Did you see much kind of uh, variance amongst the enemies that you fought with any that particularly stood out? Uh... Again, like it was, it was unfortunately it was just in this you know castle stronghold area because it was mostly yeah. just like soldiers. Um, I did feel bad we were fighting dogs or like wolves, like their pets at one point, and so like my <laughs> wolf was like killing their wolves. I was like, I don't know if I like this at all. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I don't doubt that there's going to be those classic like Final Fantasy monsters and. You can see in the footage, like us fighting the Garuda boss, like as a human, not as a as an icon initially, um, mm. and it's got that very like from soft feel of like this gigantic nightmarish creature that you're just like a tenth the size of, and you're just like going up, you know, going toe to toe with it. So I'm I'm excited to see more of that stuff. What were the the cinematic strikes as well? I saw a glimpse of that at one point. Yeah, they're like they're kind of like glorified QTEs, but like they happen. They happen in the middle of battle, um, and they're they're not like win lose. You know, if you, if you mess them up, the battle keeps going. And you just don't get to take like a, a nice extra chunk off the enemy's health or whatever. Um, but they're very very seamless and very very cool looking. Um, yeah. So I love it's the kind of like of a cinematic strike and that it calls it out as such. I, yeah, the fact that it says it's cinematic, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is cinematic. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. like, you're gonna like this one. Um, they're uh, they're cool. Like, like it's like a little in like the aspect ratio. <laughs> Get <laughs> stupid with it. <laughs> it's like a it's yeah. It's just like a little juicy cutscene reward for getting partway through a battle. I like it. Cool. Uh, and then the last question I suppose I've got for you then is like, what did you experience in the way of progression and unlocks? Did you kind of get a hint at any of the customization or anything like that? Yeah, it was tough because they'd unlocked a bunch of stuff for us ahead of time, so um, I didn't really sort of get a feel right. for how those things pan out over time um, but there's unique sort of skill trees for all of the icons that you can amass there's one for Clive the main character who's like the only playable character um, and then there's all your basic like Final, Final Fantasy fans will be happy that it's just like EXP and leveling and armor and all that kind of stuff that you want out of those games without any weird twists or anything like that so so, um, like, when yeah. you're leveling, and um, help, hope we kind of understand this. Hopefully, I'm, I'm following it correctly. The icons are they kind of like stances? Mm. Is that like a fair Almost. comparison? Are you leveling up yeah. certain kind of play styles? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It I'll looks very it. similar to DMC's style system. Like right. you could change between them with a D-pad, and it changes. Like, say, you fight mainly with swords, or like you fight mainly with guns. Like that's how DMC works, and I get that vibe from this. Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Shannon, James, I've exhausted my list of questions. Did you have any more to fire Kieran's way? Was it good? <laughs> it was, I guess that we should like we should, we should approach that, that right? Um, <laughs> no, does I, it feel good to play? Like, is it, like what if you had like one? Con I, I guess uh, to be slightly negative, what would if you had one concern? What would it be? My 
my only concern is just not knowing how linear it is. Um, yeah. Not that I mind a linear action game anyway. Um, I get the vibe it's not as open as 15 was. I, I don't think so. No. Yeah. I feel like yeah, it's more I, God I of War. I assumed it was, but I, I did realize as we were saying it, I wasn't sure for certain. But that's yeah. not a bad thing necessarily. Like we it's all, not, I, no. No, yeah. not at all. Like, I feel like open not world, especially like now, like they've yeah. especially opted for spoken. As, like, as far as I understand it, and like I don't think this is something they've actually shown or revealed, um, but I, I guess I can talk about it because they did talk about it, is that they it has like a central hub um, mm. where you kind of amass uh, a, a, you know more characters over time and and you have like a war table world map thing where you can travel to different parts of the world and do missions and stuff so I feel like I feel like it reminds me more of God of War Ragnarok with that that house and yeah. being able to go to the different realms and they're semi-open I think that's kind of what they're going for yeah I like that maybe that makes it a little bit more digestible for you Shannon rather yeah, than having another definitely. open world game a hundred percent yeah I'm done with open worlds at this point <laughs> <laughs> well, eager to hear more about Resident Evil 16 and your final thoughts on the game. Curious they've gotten, they've gotten insane. What oh. happened to the other eight games? The seven games. What did I say? <laughs> Resident Evil 16. Oh, wow. <laughs> final Fantasy 16 is what I meant to say. Um, but we will have I'm to excited. wait for its eventual release and for your full review. But thank you for sharing your thoughts in the preview. No worries. Thanks for listening.